Douglas. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you okay. How are you doing? <laughs> I'm good, my friend. Thank you. How are you? Yeah, yeah I'm doing well, doing very well. <laughs> we had a busy morning, busy day. Uh, yeah, busy morning. I've got <laughs> class at client in at one and then I've yeah. got a couple of hours to myself and then that's me, clients, for the rest of the day again. Yeah, oh, brilliant, brilliant. No, uh, thank you very much, anyway, Doug, for um, coming on to uh, speak to us on this uh, Business Wealth and Mindset podcast. And uh, yeah, it'd be good to um, just capture your, you know, your your journey and your story in a way that uh, you know can inspire some of our, our our audience as well. So it's good to link up with you uh, uh, through Sharon. So um, yeah, looking forward to um, yeah learning more about you and. Uh, uh, you know, giving us a bit of your um, wisdom and golden nuggets as well, the successes, the challenges and the lessons within. So I thought probably um, we can begin by if you just uh, give a, give us a bit of a background about yourself, like from humble beginnings and growing up on your journey, and then we can pick the lessons and the challenges and the story within. Is that, is that all right, yeah? Yeah, that's fine. That's fine. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, thanks for having me, first and foremost. Um, I didn't actually realise this was going to be recorded as a podcast, but I'm, I'm good to go, no problem. Absolutely. So, yeah, a little bit about myself and my background. I mean, just very quickly, you know, I think a, a kind of classic story of a lot of entrepreneurs is I, you know, I left school without really any qualifications. Mm. I say left, that's saying it kindly. <laughs> I was kind of, I was asked politely to, to leave. <laughs> yeah. Um, mm. I had a good year ahead, as it was called, and he said to me, you know, Douglas, there's nothing left here for you. Uh, you should probably leave before you get expelled. Mm. Um, so I did that and I went on to college. First, you know, I kind of, my dad was a mechanic, a very skilled mechanic, so I went and did, uh, you know, motor mechanics for a mm. while. And I quickly realised that that wasn't for me. So uh, then I was sat on the stairs waiting to go into a class one day and I looked up and I just saw a music recording studio. So mm. I went straight away and I signed up to create music. Because before that, but I'd been a DJ and stuff anyway at that time, so hmm. it made sense to me. So I went and I got some qualifications in audio and music technology, and I did that for quite a while. Um, and then after a while, for various reasons, I came back to what I call my first love, which was martial arts. Yeah. Hmm. So I always had an interest in the, the arts, shall we say? Yeah. And that led me into the world of security um, and being pretty much the smallest bouncer around. <laughs> I'm a small guy, so um, I was a very small bouncer, so a lot of it was about mind, which yeah. was good because that led to me running my boss's company for a few years. Mm -hmm. And then when he kind of dropped the ball, I picked it up and then ran my own company for about four years. Yeah. But the industry was just changing so much. Society was kind of certainly in the, the 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 town where the kind of bulk of my business was was taking a turn I didn't like. Mm. Uh, so therefore, long story short, I gave that up and went to you know change career, and I went for my personal trainer certificate. Mm -hmm. And when I got that, I then moved out of that town to the town I currently run uh, backwards <clears throat> my, wow. My, wow. My, health, my health academy so I'm actually in here just now wow. um, Brilliant. moved here but I started out by cleaning toilets in one of the big leisure facilities along the road mm -hmm. and then just worked my way up um, to you know doing classes and ended up doing so much work for them which eventually led to me getting this place and opening up and doing my own thing. Because mm. I always like to try and do my own thing. I've always kind of been that way. 
Mm. Um, throughout my whole life, you could say I was, uh, I've always had the entrepreneurial spirit, whatever you want to call it. Mm. Um, because I like to be free to, to, to express my work, shall we yeah. say. So things mm. like taking uh, grants that would then have me beholden to a system and things like that. I stay, I stay away from all of that. Yeah. I just do it on my own by myself. Mm-hmm. Obviously, the last three years have been quite rough, especially yes. for the health and fitness industry. Mm-hmm. The irony is, everything that was in pl- that they wanted in place for COVID safety is how I've always run my facility anyway. Um, so there was no real big changes as far as I how how I run my facility. Mm-hmm. So I've been doing this for about the past five years. And that has most certainly led on to some interesting work that I never really intended to get into. Yeah. Excuse me, which ironically ties back to mechanics. Yeah. So I'm more of a body mechanic than a car mechanic. All right. Okay. You know, know, quite a lot of that comes from martial art practice because if you study martial arts correctly, then it's all about learning about the human body and going back, you know, hundreds of thousands of years sifus or teachers or whatever name you want to give them from from whatever discipline and and, um, Mm. uh, culture have always had that kind of healing thing as well Mm. and that just seems to have been something that came forth in in my work and so what i you know i love to do in my work now is uh, i like to help people recover and heal physically and mentally in yeah. ways that they've been told they wouldn't or in ways they told they would just have to live with it and things mm. like that mm. so essentially you know it just kind of happened that these people would land on my doorstep and being the i like to say i'm a bit like a dog with a bone i don't give up so mm. they come to me and they're like oh you well, you know i'll just have to live with this and i'm like mm, i'm not convinced and you know nine times out of ten because of that tenacity and my love for what I do, which is basically helping people because I love that part, even in my security work. <clears throat> my mantra as a as a bouncer was, you know, we're not here. Our job is not to stop people getting in or throw people out. Our job is to ensure that everyone has a good night. Mm-hmm. So you do whatever mm-hmm. it is that surrounds that core function, which is yeah. to help people enjoy their night and have a good night mm. so that's what i like to say is I was, you know i love to help people and currently that manifestation is is what i do now and i don't see that changing for a long time because you know that mm. how i can help people physically and or mentally is mm. a is a blessing to be able to do that and i think you know i love to help people but i think this is my purpose i don't think i know it now you know, I'm 100% sure that this is my purpose now. So yeah. I'm quite comfortable in that. <laughs> oh, brilliant. That, that's really, really good. I mean, you mentioned uh, uh, two key words in, in there that I just picked up. I mean, first you mentioned about the mindset as well, which which is quite key. And then later on, you mentioned about the discipline as well. So, I mean, just picking up from that, because, I mean, you mentioned yourself initially the stuff that you've done has been just yourself uh pushing yourself to achieve is that uh because there wasn't like people around you like or role models or support that would actually almost like babysit you or help you to to your journey then you just had to build this you know tenacity to say look i'm just gonna go for it myself or was there something else behind it because it looks like you picked up this mindset that, you know, it's got to be me and I'm just going to go for it. <laughs> yeah, that's actually very um, observant of you to, to say that, from what I, to, to pick that up from what I said. Funnily enough, I was thinking about this just on Monday while I was crushing myself on a hill run. Hmm. It was just what you were saying there, I was thinking about influences and role models that I've had in my life and really they haven't been that many. Mm. <laughs> Excuse me and fix this. There we go. Squint. Um 
There really haven't been that many. I can point to my first martial arts coach, John, may he rest in peace. Um, he was a great inspiration, you know. Mm. I'll never forget, this is one, excuse me, my favourite stories, as I was at a competition and there wasn't many people there. And as I've said, I'm a very small guy and I was even smaller then. Mm. Um, not just because I was younger, but in the last couple of years, I've put on a lot more mass just because I mm. got into heavy lifting. Not to get bigger, that just happened by yeah. proxy. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm quite enjoying it. But in that competition, the only guy I could be paired with was a guy that was literally about that much bigger than me, taller and just bigger yeah. in general. Mm. And I remember I was a much better fighter, much better judo fighter than him. There was no two ways about that, but it was just mm. dealing with his size was so tough. <laughs> and so I kept kind of getting him down and getting him down and getting small scores. And, and I'll never forget one of the times we went down and I didn't score, he just kind of flopped on top of me and I'll never forget getting up and kind of looking over at him was just that look, not of defeat, but of not demoralised, deflated, deflated yeah. uh, look on my face and my coach, John, mm. um, again may God rest his soul, was on the referee panel Yeah, and I looked up at him he sat up straight like this and he went, pointed at me, pointed at the guy, and then he pointed down. <laughs> he just went, you put him down. Oh, wow. and I'll never forget that because I stood up and I just kept going at it and then I managed to get, you know, the Wazari, which is the second highest score, which then guaranteed me uh, winning the fight because the guy wasn't throwing me.